Hey, uh, thanks for that, Arvin. Yeah, so it has been a very um, uh, challenging journey from system admin to architect. I think most of you, as Arvin rightly pointed, might not know about that role that existed uh, a decade back. Uh, so yeah, it was really uh, challenging. But yes, uh, as as Arvin said, uh, yes, it will be lots of you know roles I've been changing. Uh, but uh, overall, it's been. Uh, I see like uh, these challenges when you don't face any challenges, you don't grow. So uh, that's what and I evolved myself from a system admin to operation to dev to uh, to the DevOps and then uh, now into a role of a cloud architect. So mostly I, I am equipped with uh, I've worked my seven, eight years now in Azure and since last seven, eight, seven months, I've uh, I have been working in AWS. Right, so I have hands-on experiences in, in Azure and AWS on the cloud front. But yes, DevOps is something I have been following and working since uh, uh, SAP, SAP, SAP. Tarun, your mic is muted, I think by mistake. Yeah, maybe. Uh, OK, uh, sorry about that. So there was some background noises. So uh, basically, uh, so yes, uh, this has been. Um, uh, so basically now I'm working in the cl AWS cloud front where I have designed the architecture uh, on the networking side in my organization and working uh, uh, to you know, a lot of integration systems which which uh, I have been working with the network engineers and now into developing the developing the pipelines. But these kind of sessions I love doing, especially on the cloud native front uh, when it involves the cloud agnostics tools like uh, Ergo CD, Flux CD, or they even frankly speaking uh, a month before Tecton was also new to me. But this has been into market. I, I think as this this word has been in the market since uh, late 2020s. But 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 the community, it's also a C, like CNCF Kubernetes. This is also an open source community, Tecton. And it was first, uh, this is a cloud native DevOps tool developed by Google. So with that, uh, I think uh, I can share my screen. Uh, so it's been, yes, it's been a journey of over around 13 years now. Uh, but yes, uh, especially on the cloud native CHD, I love doing the things. I have worked in Jenkins and Azure DevOps as well uh, for Azure DevOps for quite long and Jenkins for some time as well in my uh, Sapien days. So since Sapien, my DevOps journey started. So it's been uh, five years now. Uh, but yes, um, so so this is the topic today. Uh, I will just go through some uh, some. I have to go through. I know that you, you know. I even if I have a hands-on guy. I don't like presenting slides. But uh, for the sake of session, I have just prepared uh, some of the slides, uh, 10, 15 slides, right? Uh, but I will be go focusing more on the hands-on and the YAML scripting, um, and basically to get you started over Tecton, uh, because I agree, uh, as Arvind said, this is very niche topic, and most of you might not have heard. So, if I have to cover this topic at Tecton fully, I need at least uh, at least three sessions are needed for fully covering the automation pipelines as well. But this session focuses on getting started as the topic suggests so that you can get started right away. I will also let you know the prerequisites which are needed to start this at your local desktop itself. So um, let me uh, just uh, uh, just hold on. So let me just uh, uh, go to the next slide. I think uh, somehow I'm able to OK. So this is the this is the agenda. What is Tecton and its concepts defining cloud native terminology? Um, so just to give a definition on this, I, the, I want to introduce this topic and uh, how the Tecton pipeline looks like. Basically, the components, components of Tecton pipeline, um, what are needed to, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
the basically the uh, the different uh, steps to develop the tectonic pipeline, pipelines or the terminology which will be used in tectonic pipelines and then just three things i will be going through today creating uh, started with the task getting started with the pipelines and then the triggers this uh, this uh, 40 45 minutes frankly honestly this is very less time for me to explore fully fully uh, hence uh, show you the all these things but i think step by step we can proceed so this is just a beginning uh, yes, uh, but uh, let's go with this. So uh, just to let you know what is Tekton and how and who uses this technology. Basically, it's a cloud native solution for building the CACD. Uh, and then it's a, as I said, it's a also a Linux foundation project. Unlike uh, that, like Kubernetes is a CNCF, right? So uh, Tekton is a Linux foundation and CD foundation. Um, the, these uh, references, the links, and on all I will share to you, slides will be shared. So that's not a problem. So just focus on the concept and the how to uh, you know start with. Now the third point says that uh, uh, Tekton installs and run, and so it's a basically extension to Kubernetes cluster. So we have like Argo CD. We we could have done this uh, CI CD in Kubernetes using Argo CD and Flux CD as well. Those are also CI CD. But here, uh, this is another uh, another one which is Tekton. Uh, which uh, so each CI CD comes with own uh, its own feature and advantages or disadvantages. So Tekton's basically the extension of Kubernetes cluster and comprise of the Kubernetes custom resource. Uh, and it's a kind of building block. Uh, you will see, we will understand what are building blocks. We are going in the, the doing the development of the cube or deploying the th things in the Kubernetes cluster uh, using a building blocks like task, uh, you know, uh, steps, task, pipelines, pipeline run, task run. I will show all these blocks. These are called building blocks. So step by step, it's very, very easy to understand. And it is whom, so basically who are using these things. These are being used by so called platform engineers uh, uh, in, in platform. So we have a terminology today called platform engineering. So that has been evolving right now. So in platform engineering, these kind of cloud native tools play a very important role. Like uh, so it is that's why it is used by the platform engineers who build CI/CD systems for their developers. And obviously, apart from the platform engineers or DevOps, this has been used by developers also um, to deploy their application uh, to the uh, uh, to the Kubernetes cluster. So uh, yes, so this is like uh, what is now the other thing that uh, I've just spoken about on a theoretical aspect, cloud native technology. What exactly is cloud native technology? Cloud native, uh, because these as terms are essential because uh, if I um, don't start from these, this scratch, I think uh, uh, all of us might not be in the same background. So uh, just wanted to go through uh, quickly. Cloud native technology is the software approach of building, deploying, and managing modern applications. So today we have evolved from uh, a monolithic application to microservice application. Monolithic involved uh, a huge waterfall model, right, uh, from the building to the testing stage. It took uh, we used to take very uh, large amount of coding, most of time spent in coding, and then it was uh, the testing guys who used to test. And when if it is anything failed again, we used to repeat the same cycle. Development used to happen very, uh, very, uh, uh, you know, um, iteratively and just slow process. But in my, in monolithic, uh, uh, in, in, sorry, in microservice, it's called a building blocks. In small, small, we break the application to small, small modules like payment gateway or or e-commerce gateway, or we break the application to small things, right? So this is where uh, cloud native comes into the picture. So we use um, cloud native as a because independent of the cloud independent of the cloud cloud native means independent of the cloud so today the topic which i'm going to present it is uh, can be used in any any given cloud uh, uh, basically a amazon or or azure or google so this is the meaning of cloud native and it is mostly used in the micro uh, microservice based application monolithic is no longer there but kubernetes if you see it is still used in on premise versions as well it is used in both uh, uh, on premise which is um, uh, monolithic as well as microservices 
uh, so it is used still used somewhere in um, on premises as well so why this is was needed companies wanted to build a highly scalable flexible and resilient applications right to meet the customer demands very quickly they want to have a, because today a customer go uh, you know in 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 uh, in months if you don't deliver the product they uh, don't um, we have for your product is not for uh, consumer centric um, you know don't work on the consumer feedback then you know you start losing the customers that is where this technology came cloud native application so if you see there uh, different building blocks are there and it comprises of the modern design microservices containers and um, services and automation so uh, while we uh, while we uh, still see this slide i think uh, uh, let me um, first cover this one and after that i will just go to the uh, the the window uh, the yaml uh, scripting and uh, the pipeline the how to uh, basically and tommy will discuss and then after seven slide i will just go through the my um, the practical thing which i want to cover so so that it won't be a boring session so uh, there are four principle of cloud native development again microservices containerization continuous delivery and devops so microservice i i i won't go in detail these things all you can find in the um, slides as well uh, this particular in the internet all things mostly from internet or or through my my research microservice architecture is an important development approach which is you know spreading your large application to small modules chunks right that is called microservices now to build microservices modules you need containers you, you uh, need a uh, uh, containers uh, which can uh, uh, it's again containers is a uh, 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 pass you, you know if it's a ies pass and sas model so containerization concept came uh, after the vm you know uh, all things uh, can be uh, you know uh, it act as a os and lot of uh, applications or uh, can be run in a single container so we will go through those terminology not in detail but uh, yes there are pods containers uh, containers were running in the pods and there are uh, and then there are uh, these are the things we will just go through so containers are the type of software that can virtually package and isolate application for development each i uh, container is independent of the other containers so that so this is the beauty actually also of the microservice development so uh, each things are independent of each other and you can work in modules to deliver the product so this is the uh, isolation containerization property very good one then comes the continuous delivery a continuous delivery is a software delivery approach in which development teams produce and test codes uh, in shorts but continuous cycles and then the devops technology it's basically uh, the union of the operations and the development i think with that uh, with that uh, just uh, uh, before we uh, start on this uh, there are there are couple of see uh, to start with tecton pipelines right so tecton pipelines consist of five five component which are very important step task task run pipeline and pipeline run these are the five things so let me show the picture first right so this is the one before as i explain let me uh, just present here so so your uh, consider this uh, uh, this as a uh, what you say a pod this is the pod this is the pod and then uh, then this is the uh in 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 a in a pod there are uh, there, there are uh, containers running right uh, so task is considered these task as a pod and step one uh, step are as the containers so uh, each uh, step like uh, i will go through the uh, the definitions steps are nothing but a containers you can define your uh, your uh, the you know steps in the uh, in the like what you want to build basically you can define the step and each step is dependent of the other and comprising of a union of the steps is called the task which is called a which is called a pod so in kubernetes concept and um, uh, since task b can be started when the task a has been completed so that's it that is where um, the uh, you know pipeline concepts come so where you call pipeline run so pipeline run we uh, will go through uh, the definition but this is the overall picture uh, pipeline run will tell how to ex execute these steps and task and 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 then there is a uh, so the combination uh, task b task c so these are the different kind of uh, 
uh, different kind of uh, terminologies which uh, um, different task basically which are there in task d like uh, it starts when task b and c are completed so this is a flow which happens uh, is just conceptual things which within just trying to make you understand this is the figure and now coming to the uh, coming to the steps so uh, step is an operation ci cd right such as running some unit test for web application or a program uh, it is uh, it can be performed independently uh, like a, in a container so uh, if i have to understand in terms of kubernetes um, or right so tecton performs each step with a container image it's a container consider this as a step as a container image uh, separate containers are created for every step for any any module separate containers are required and then comes the task task uh, so their task is a union of multiple steps so task uh, as you uh, said in the uh, as you saw in the last diagram so this is the one and task is a collection of steps in order and tecton runs a task in the form of a kubernetes pod so as i said consider this task as a kubernetes pod um, um, so this is just uh, because see i'm not going to cover the basics on the kubernetes but still uh, i am uh, i'm pretty much confident that in uh, kubernetes some of you might be knowing these terminologies pod is the smallest entity in kubernetes so it's a uh, um, just to familiarize if you want to familiarize on this session you can just go through in kubernetes website and uh, just just go through these terminologies and it will be it will be easy then to follow up so uh, tecton runs on a um, runs a task in the form of kubernetes pod right and uh, a, 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 where each step uh, becomes a running container in the pod so uh, it is running in a form of a kubernetes pod the task so consider this at a, as a single pod and there are multiple container containers running in the inside the pod and delivering the result for you um, uh, so this is where uh, it has been defined so it is a container image step task is the container pod uh, is, is a pod then comes the task run now it, this is a very important thing task run will tell uh, in other words you can just go through this definition initiates a specific task to execute on particular set of inputs and produce a particular set of outputs right so in other words task run will tell you the logic is defined in the task run task run is like how to run this task now you have the steps you have the task now who will define the logic to run sequentially like which step to run first which to second so this is covered in task run like what to do and how to do it this is there, there in the task run will define you on this one and then uh, pipeline then then comes the pipeline pipelines like uh, a set of order task and uh, and like uh, now this is like pipeline of, uh, uh, will come in this this category so now which step which basically a task should uh, run first task a then b this is this uh, defined by uh, this is called define um, a series of order task and just like step in a task a uh, task in the pipeline can use uh, output of a previous secret as i said see so now uh, see you can see that right starts when the task a completes so this is being decided by this logic is being defined by pipeline this is defined by the pipeline as it says so the uh, output of this act as a input of task b and then output of um, task a uh, defined as a output input of uh, uh, task c so you see this is very important to run so this logic right uh, this logic which i am explaining now is covered in the pipeline um, pipeline thing so in other words it creates a number of kubernetes pods and ensures that each pod completes running successfully it is the duty of the pipelines to ensure that each step task is completed successfully and sequentially so this is covered in the uh, uh, basically the pipeline now pipeline run again defines the logic like in the previous case task run uh, now the pipeline run if this initiates a specific pipeline to execute on a particular set of inputs and proceed and uh, produces particular set of outputs to particular destination so now this is um, like uh, what is the desired attitude which you want to uh, achieve like uh, um, uh, union of b and c will give d so this particular logic defining the linking of these things are being defined by the pipeline run so this will uh, overall it will uh, combine all the uh, steps the lot this particular logic right uh, of combining all these these three tasks and then producing b b and c and all this union of all these things uh, will be defined in the pipeline run these five are the major components uh, which i will be talking about when uh, when i go in the demo uh, 
any any questions till now before i go to the demo uh, Uh, this is okay. Arjun here. You mm -hmm. talked about uh, input and output. Oh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and we know, suppose task A is one pod, task B is another pod. Uh -huh. So, in the Kubernetes environment, how this input and output is passed from one pod to another? Some mechanism is there? Uh, yes, um, uh, we can define that mechanism in the uh, like um, uh, there is a dependency. Now uh, in the next uh, part, when we show in the demo, it will uh, wait the task A, uh, the task B will complete for task A to complete. And uh, this logic is being defined in the YAML scripting itself, like uh, uh, in the depend section or reference section, like uh, this linking, right? This linking is 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 defined in the uh, because each uh, task is uh, is uh, having their own YAML file. This will have their own YAML files, uh, uh, and each step will have their own YAML files. And uh, this one will be referencing this one YAML file in this particular. Uh, let's say this is the YAML file B. So this will be referencing A. So until this is completed, uh, so this it is very important to apply to apply this particular uh, you know container uh, uh, basically pod. Um, so to uh, for the task B to complete. So this logic is not. Uh, covered in the Kubernetes networking, but this is covered more on the uh, YAML things, which we will see now in the dependency section. So uh, that's why it's a little uh, difficult to understand uh, from this the pictorial representation. So this I will cover uh, while I will see the YAML. We will see the YAML scripting uh, uh, in the okay. dependency section, but nothing to do with the Kubernetes uh, networking. Uh, we can define the scripting itself. So I think uh, it's high time we can proceed with the demo. So uh, just uh, uh, just uh, as a uh, prerequisites, right? Uh, again, I think my uh, my uh, this thing in was in presenting mode. So 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 this is the uh, I am using Chocolatey. Chocolatey is the uh, 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 Windows uh, package manager tool, and then. We are using Chocolatey. It becomes very easy to install the all the components. And all and one more thing, I have Docker desktop uh, environment at my uh, local desktop, Docker desktop at my machine to uh, to host the uh, containers. And I will show you the Kubernetes also the which Docker desktop is is, is offering now. Uh, you can't use this in your organization because it's a licensed one. But at individual capacity, you still can, uh, Docker community has provided. You can still use this one, uh, Docker desktop, um, to host the containers. So Minikube, uh, I have installed a single node cluster. Single uh, Minikube is a lightweight container, uh, lightweight Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and which is very important, and we will see. Uh, we have I have installed the mini cube, which is running as a container. On top of it, we will uh, we will go through the uh, will be deploying the things, and that will be uh, mini cube is a very light node uh, Kubernetes cluster, and these are the versions of the uh, like uh, I will be using Kubernetes CLI, Chocolatey, uh, sorry Chocolatey, and mini cube. This is the version. Kubernetes version is 1.25, which I'm going to use today. Tecton release is uh, version 0.57. Tecton CD CLI is 0.35. Honestly, Tecton CD uh, and, Kube and Kubernetes CLI uh, won't be used much. It is used in the advanced cases, but we will see some usage of Tecton CD. Uh, we'll just show how uh, things have been done using Tecton CD as well. But uh, this is where uh, in the advanced use cases you need to install uh, both these uh, Tecton Kubernetes CLI and Tecton CD CLI as well, command line interface. So um, the prerequisites of Minikube is you need a two CPUs or more, 2 GB of free memory, 20 GB of free space, obviously an internet connection, and the container or virtual machines uh, such as Docker, virtual machines or VMware Fusion on this. So um, again, Minikube supports only this. I'm not covering the whole functionality of Kubernetes. So for running the Kubernetes whole functionality, you need to use an Azure AWS or EKS or AKS or or, or the GCP uh, or, or, the, or the Google, uh, the GKE environment, Google Kubernetes environment. So I'm not using those. I'm using a lightweight Minikube. It just comes with these kind of features of uh, Kubernetes, DNS, Noteports, Config map and secrets, dashboards, 
container runtime docker enabling uh, container network interface and ingress so this is the supportability of minikube it's not cover the full features of kubernetes but it's sufficient to go to the demo so i was i will showing so first uh, since i have so this is the docker desktop guys docker desktop and these uh, uh, you have the uh, basically the kubernetes as well and um, this is the uh, containers which were container images which are running here and uh, we are so in this one uh, these are the you know uh, installed or you know a few days back but uh, with this session uh, i think mini cube is the one which we have to focus which i created um, yesterday on this i was doing the r and d on this so mini cube uh, is a um, uh, docker desktop this is the docker desktop and you can see the container images uh, all things are available at uh, you know volumes uh, all things are there you see um, mini cube you know volume and dev environments we can create environments also this is the docker desktop this session doesn't focus on docker desktop but i just want to show because lots of features has came since the time if guy you guys are using docker desktop it's very good for hosting you don't have to shed any single penny to do your uh, uh, poc stuff like like i've been doing now learning centers you know just go through and start uh, using the developments using the uh, the docker desktop lot of um you know language supportability this is you know covering all the things you can also add the custom extensions uh custom extensions uh like uh, wrap or docker and then a lot of psp anything which you want to um, uh, you know uh, you can install any uh, basically extensions in the cube extension marketplace you can see now in the container this is the where i have installed the mini cube uh, and uh, this is uh, basically the file which has been um, running here and uh, i will show how i have been uh, this is the parameters have been shown in the docker desktop it is a very uh, i think i liked its feature this is if you show and these are the ports custom ports which are configured and installed and i have used uh, i am using visual studio code to i have used um, uh, visual code to do the development mostly but uh, the command line interface also i have used sometimes to uh, do this so to install this what i have used is uh, basically let me uh, so uh, this chocolatey uh, this is the okay so to start with this is where i have followed um, you can get all the things uh, from here this is where the tecton dev community this is where all their apis are hosted tecton dot dev it was originally developed by google and um, uh, since then it is uh, going through uh, and uh, which is uh, like steps which i have to show so first we will create a um, tecton task then tecton pipeline and then we will show uh, uh, there's a uh, called the tecton trigger these are three things which i'm planning to cover so uh, steps for creating the tecton task is creating a kubernetes cluster mini cube and then installing the kubernetes uh, tecton pipelines creating a task using a task run to initiate the run task so uh, first uh, let us see how we can go through uh, installing this is the same article which i have followed to create this one mini cube uh, first this is the installing mini cube is this this thing which you have to do again this is a very uh, good one to start with and uh, uh, you can just uh, but i have not followed this one i have been using chocolatey 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 is there in my machine and uh, i have used uh, commands like chocolatey uh, chocolatey uh, choco uh, like version to see the uh basically the version chocolatey is a windows package manager tool you can install uh, chocolatey using any of the uh, basically uh, chocolatey is a package manager tool so windows chocolatey is a, this is the one you can uh, install installing chocolatey you can just do a setup install um, this is where you can install it it makes the you know things easy for you this is the uh, uh, like uh, powershell you know uh, command which you have to run for the uh, things and then you can use this to install the chocolatey in your uh, windows management it's you really makes the things very easy for for you to set up the platform and uh, the, i have not followed this rt uh, this chocolatey is the one which i have uh, installed the all the components and uh, install this mini cube after that choco install mini cube and then i have when i have to search the mini cube version the mini uh, cube
so mini cube uh okay so this is if you see mini cube is already installed in my in my machine so uh, uh so basically uh, it says a mini cube start status stairs dashboard and pause and these are the commands which you i can use so this is uh this is like i can use or uh, basically see what is it's happening here so uh so this is the mini cube it is already installed in my machine and then comes the uh, tecton pipelines tecton pipelines again it's uh, again it's a uh, uh, version which needs to be installed here um, like this after you have installed this one uh, this will give once you install this one you will get this uh, in the your kubernetes again you need to have a uh, something related to the containers to run so docker desktop is very essential so before you ever install mini cube there should be a docker daemon process running otherwise you won't be able to run your uh, containers Docker. That's why uh, I didn't need it the uh, cloud environment because I already had Docker environment, doc, Docker desktop. Or so that's why Docker daemon process should be running uh, if, before installing Minikube. So make sure you have Docker desktop installed in your machine, and uh, you can just sign in if it is not there. Uh, just sign in once with Docker. There's a uh, website in the Docker desktop. Uh, you can just install the Docker desktop for for Windows. So uh, again, for this one also, we have Docker Desktop for Windows, which you can just uh, uh, install it and Docker uh, Desktop uh, for Windows. This is where you can install this um, uh, install this one and and this I think it will be uh, done. And this, these are the prerequisites which are needed. Before that, you can't even start working on this one. Minikube, before Minikube, just install this and then start Minikube. And then when you come into, uh, then this will give you the cluster info, will give you the, uh, again, I'm not going to a fully automated pipeline right now, just to give you the um, uh, uh, look and feel uh, how it looks like. Uh, cube cuddle uh, cluster or an info. Uh, to just see so control panel is running on the this particular port this is the custom port i have not done anything which has been created which you saw here also i think uh, show all ports these are the ports which are running in different ports um, uh, so we will just start with a hello world application and we will see um, uh, so this is the core dna is running in this namespace proxy and uh, once this is done it will go through the it's display the same and then it now see if you see these commands now you have this many yaml files i will try to cover only the basic ones which is uh, hello world and hello world uh, in the main considering the time uh, so that you can just go through uh, what is needed so once it's uh, file name release.yaml so let me show this file once you deploy this is the release file which you get this is you can see it's a google thing right so it is Google APIs. This was originally developed by Google One, um, Google on uh, this particular um, net cloud native. This is already defined by Kubernetes like namespace, Tecton pipelines. There is def no default namespace. Namespace is Tecton pipelines which we are using. And then we have a policy applied restricted, right? And um, then the cluster role which we have. Uh, I'm not in the matter of time. I don't have. Um, I can't cover all these things, but I will try to cover what all which is needed here. So uh, Tecton Dev, you can say it's referencing lots of things from the Tecton Dev website. Uh, custom runs, verification policy, pipeline run pipelines, task C. These are defining all the things. Task which I explained. Task, task runs, uh, pipelines, pipeline runs, and we have custom runs as well. So this is all which I was just referencing few minutes back. Yes, you can persistence volume. This is uh, where uh, it is deploying the Tecton Pipelines cluster. Uh, so this Tecton Pipeline is deployed inside the Kubernetes cluster until the Argo CD and Flux CD. This works inside the Kubernetes cluster. You already need to have a Kubernetes cluster to um, to uh, done this. So that is why this release pipeline, you can see you release YAML, uh, all the things which are defined here. We have hooks, default Tecton Pipelines, and then these are referencing. These are the resource name which are being whitelisted to run this. Pipeline uh, pipeline runs task and then task runs and then uh, this is what I was just uh, and this you can just go through validations and the uh, uh, the components which are being displayed here and yes this is where I was saying resources uh, components task task runs pipeline pipeline runs 
and this custom runs as well and this referencing this particular website that is the authorization our back control also we need to give the permissions also for the pipelines to access your cluster so this is nothing but the cluster setup of that one and then this our back role and and i think this is endless going i can't explain all these things but just go through this one you should be able to understand but if not then i can uh, can help uh, to uh, just go through uh, go through all this so uh, the, this after this like you have to just go through and run this basic task so when it come to the basic task let me go to the hello world example uh, right this is the one this is where uh, this will you will understand basically task what is task what is step and uh, what is uh, task run and we will also go through the pipeline run these four components we will just cover in this one um, so this uh, question which arvind das is will also be covered here uh, the dependencies i will show in my next yaml file so this uh, again to apply each and every file i have to uh, use cube cutl apply and the file name and this the path reference which i have been taking and then uh, so this is say hello world right this is the um, version again this has been taken from the google uh, uh, this uh, ready yaml files are been taken from that kind is task right and the name of the task is hello now steps are uh, steps are eco alpine this is a alpine image lightweight image another lightweight image which we are using to uh, display the hello world example script is hello world and uh, it is uh, hosted on the alpine image and this is where uh, this task name this particular uh, step name is uh, uh, your what you call is uh, hello now this will um, this will again be called uh, in um, um, uh, like uh, what you call the task uh, this is called simple task and now this is called task run so to uh, run this uh, concept this is one task right so to run this task you need a you need basically a how define logic how it will be run so this is defined in the task run so if you see name is hello task run but it is referencing this hello this hello was the name of this particular so it is referencing this task reference so spe specific in specification section uh, there of course there are other section but uh, in this particular starting on the this thing they they have eliminated all these things let's focus on the logic itself that's why this is where it is so this is the main example after you have deployed the release of the uh, the tecton release in the kubernetes uh, define all the uh, you know set up the tecton in the on the kubernetes cluster then it comes the steps which we have to define um, this is the kind task and the and the task you have defining this step which is uh, name is hello now you are referencing to run this task there is a task run which i was explaining and this is my name is hello task run for this and this is referencing hello so when i run this one uh, it will uh, it will be done uh, and it will define the logic of running this task uh, now after this uh, see uh, once you run this one uh, creating when you create a task then you you create a task run to initiate and run the task so this is how you have run the task and uh, validated so now to see uh, basically after all doing all this in cube portal get run uh, task hello run and this is where uh, you can just see um, after deploying you can just see uh, like uh, just hold on so you can just see where it so you can see it has been uh, i have deployed it yesterday so it is uh, after deploying this task run see this is succeeded this is already completed this one and uh, uh, this you can get the task run for cube cutl uh, get task run and the task run name this is how you execute and now you can also check the logs uh just to uh, just to be assured uh, on the the steps and the um uh, sorry uh, this one so you can just go through the default it has been printed the hello world uh, so it is displaying the um, the basically the cube cutls which you have already applied the files uh, so this is displaying that that logs uh, again uh, after this you this is this another one which is called uh, um, the tecton pipeline so in the tecton pipelines you define uh, in the pipeline example i think uh, they have decreted two task now two task is nothing but um, i think uh, this is where two task comes um, create two task create a pipeline containing your task use pipeline run to initiate and run the containing task so two task which has been run is uh, nothing but uh, nothing sort of uh, uh, this is like 
creating two task is goodbye hello world example so this is uh, uh, goodbye hello world this is the one so now it is creating uh, basically um, step name which is uh, uh, task is uh, task name is goodbye and then there is a parameters defined in this uh, um, uh, in this particular task now we have defined uh, in the pipeline we have defined the parameters also and uh, in the step we are defining uh, the goodbye as the step and uh, and it is asking the user it will ask user for the username and uh, once it's uh, done then you define the hello world pipeline example you then here you see two union of multiple uh, multiple tasks so and the linking basically you just reference your now i will explain what is this uh, pipeline how this pipeline uh, the pipeline is being established the so specification username it has been taken username as a input task is hello then task is uh, goodbye and this task is uh, so this is defining the sequence right so this um, uh, task which is called uh, uh, what you say the the goodbye task right there is a goodbye task should run run after hello and uh, then uh, and run uh, this should uh, goodbye should run after hello and then uh, it is referencing the goodbye task which task is referencing the goodbye task this particular one and it, this task should run after hello this logic is defined in the pipeline pipeline uh, task uh, pipeline uh, which you said uh, in the parameters you can ask for the parameter the username uh, this is basically the pipeline uh, pipeline thing which uh, was explaining after this then comes the uh, this this logic comes the pipeline run which you have to do pipeline run is nothing sort of uh, down this will uh, name is by hello goodbye run and then this is referencing hello goodbye this is referencing each and every step by uh, you know you can see referencing is there right here uh, ref task reference goodbye so this pipeline run will uh, be referencing hello goodbye uh, this is referencing this pipeline so this pipeline this is called pipeline run pipeline run um, command line so this is referencing this pipeline and the username is uh, parameters is like it, 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 uh, username i have defined as tecton but it can be any customized this would be needed in the trigger section the in the last part which i want to cover uh, tecton triggers so um, to start with so this is where uh, this will be useful in the event event generation whenever a thing is deployed in the kubernetes cluster or any event has happened uh, tecton has a beauty of updating uh, through a event handler so that is covered in the uh, the third section which 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 is covered so when i apply all these things right um, goodbye and all these things and this is where uh, this is covered here and um, this uh, this defined the ubuntu uh, ubuntu uh, image image you can select any alpine or ubuntu and then this is where where all it is deemed defined uh, hello goodbye pipeline and then pipeline run and uh, this is the output which will come now here uh, the, you have to deploy a tecton uh, tecton cli as well in this particular section this is the tecton cli so this where uh, this particular um, this will choco install tecton cli this is you have to install when you are doing the, the demonstration of uh, using your tecton pipeline of course you have to interact with the tecton pipeline right so tecton cli is essential for this one so this is where uh, this tecton cli is will be needed for this so yeah this is where uh, uh, we have deployed and we have run through uh, we can run uh, see the logs here uh, this is all uh, right now uh, just to get you um, uh, you know something so see here hello world it is taking two tasks um, uh, this previous one hello eco world which is a user input and goodbye 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 to tecton so this is uh, um, the eco uh, the parameters which we have defined for both of this uh, uh, task it is combining the our previous hello world example as well as the goodbye tecton so this is uh, uh, this is the command line tkn uh, command line cli of the tecton so uh, then we come uh, towards the triggers part this is getting started with triggers security is also there but uh, you have to understand this all this first and then you can um, explore then there are lots of things very interesting things on a dashboard perspective as well which you can just uh, go through and uh, I'm planning to write. I find it very interesting. I'm planning to write a blog also on this in recent few coming days. So getting started with the triggers, like not triggers, is a very important thing. If anything, which is you know, this is the architecture of the trigger. 
so when he uh, the, the this is where we will create trigger binding trigger template uh, anything which is so trigger template we will be creating trigger template input will be taken from the trigger binding any any process payload which will be happen here uh, we will be running a one, one even plot listener a listener will be running anything which i pass now as a payload i will be passing as a payload this is the curl i will be passing one particular input this is called a payload anything which i am passing as a payload an event will be event service will be running and it will uh, generate the event for us handle uh, it will show the accept uh, the logs for this uh, this is where uh, uh, let me uh, quickly go through this is where uh, let will uh, i will just uh, port forward this is where uh, it will start listening for the port forwarding but this one uh, before without even looking into that this is where you need to first define the uh, the basically uh, trigger binding this is the trigger uh, template which you have to define then trigger binding then uh, event listener you have to configure these things to help any deployment needs to happen you need to um, uh, create a event handling mechanism so this has happened through trigger template which you have to define and uh, 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 this is where uh, trigger template and hello template you can just define and then default username uh, so this if we have not passed it will not wait for username i have given here the default username is kubernetes so this is pipeline run uh, which is uh, defined here and hello goodbye and run as we uh, took from the last example so you see uh, each and every steps connected to uh, these things using the yaml scripting itself and any event which has happened will be defined here template once we have defined then uh, then we have the binding which will and actually part of the input it will pass the input to the trigger template so this will username body this is where you can put any username body dot username it will ask for the username this is why you can see in my payload i'm trying to pass this username um, so this is where it will act as an input to template and this is very important creating the event listener so everything you deploy anything in the kubernetes cluster is something some service needs to listen to the events so this is where this is very important event listen dot yaml so this is where so um, this uh, now this i have not explained uh, actually i should have explained so to access uh, in event handling trigger actually it will come in trigger only you have to create a rbac yaml to access the uh, basically to access the uh, this particular thing a payload to access or even to access this thing uh, uh, rbac roles needs to be created that is created with the help of uh, uh, this uh, rbac role rbac service account needs to be accessible uh, there need to be a service account for your event to or uh, to interact with this uh, event listener or the or the pod or cluster so this is where the uh, the cluster roles are defined in the rbac then comes the uh, this thing that on robot is the uh, the account name the service account name and then there's a trigger called hello trigger and it is taking the binding and the template referencing binding and and the template so this is the trigger these are three and actually four yaml files rbac is needed first accessing service account so when i um, i generate so this is the port forwarding cube cuttle listener right this is called listener this is the listener which is listening to this uh, port custom port uh, 8080 which is defined here um, which is defined here custom port 8080 it is listening to the events now anything which i am trying to pass through this listener right um, anything which i uh, now i will trigger this payload from the cluster intercept i'm gonna kubernetes cluster incident intercept i will try to pass one uh, payload uh, payload thing and you will see the uh, listening things which are uh, uh, we will see the events generated here. Um, um, so this is like I can pass any username, not necessarily Tecton, uh, but in the in the YAML you see Tecton. But I here I view see as you see Tecton one two three have passed. Now I'm trying to trigger a payload here uh, for events to get generated. I think uh, let me clear the screen first. Okay, uh, so as of now, forwarding only, forwarding from. So let me try to generate one payload again. Handling connection for 8080 means it's trying to listen to the request which I have entered. Although it says that could not be resolved, but at least it is giving me that something is listening, even listener is running. 
uh, event listening and learning, which is um, um, listening to the events. Uh, my input might be wrong. This payload request may be wrong, but uh, at least it's listening to the events. It uh, this output itself is showing that the event listener is working. Logic is working well. So this is where the uh, tecton trigger how it will work. Uh, I think and, uh, you have given minus D something, no? Uh, minus that D is for data, uh, Arvind. Yeah, then it uh, should be a flower bracket, no? To JSON. Okay, uh, then what should I pass here? Any idea? <laughs> so, no, flower bracket saying. around username and tecton 123, there should be a flower bracket that defines the JSON payload. I okay. Mean, this is my uh, guess. Yeah. No, I think you are right. Let me see. I think it works. At least not giving the error. Uh, I don't know. Let me check. Yeah, I think it's doing something. Yes, I think. Uh, no, I know. I think error. <laughs> Still. Hmm. It says uh, this is what it was happening. I tried multiple, um, you know, uh, things, but uh, the payload section is failing. I was doing this thing. Yeah, let's look at uh, the error again once more. Um, yeah, this is the error. Says yeah, the now the error is different. No? Uh, yeah, error yeah. is invalid event body format. Invalid character you're looking for beginning of object key string. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. It's. Uh, Basically related to formatting your JSON. Okay. Yeah. But okay. yeah, it can be easily fixed if you go through some example. Okay. Yeah, I will just go through it. And um, yeah, you can wrap up. Then we'll have some Q and A. Yeah. If yeah, yeah. I think I'm done. Then with this, I'm done. And yes, I will be forwarding the slides. I will attach all the screenshots and the uh, the references, which can get you started. So that's it. Uh, so. Yeah, one of my main question is, suppose you go to your old slides like task A, task B. Suppose okay. task C, uh, I may have two conditions. If task A succeeds, I want B to run. If task mm -hmm. A fails, maybe I want B to run under under a different input. So those things can be specified in the that pipeline or pipeline be... run. Yes, that can be specified in the pipeline run. You have to modify your pipeline run to uh, to take task B as the source. If there is a problem with this, you have to you uh, uh, you can start from uh, you know that is where the module this is the module is independent of this one. You can uh, start with this one, eliminate completely eliminate this one until you fix this one, and then once this is fixed, but again you have to revert the changes. Um, uh, you can still um, uh, execute task B independent of task A. You can come back to this once this is ready. But once this is ready, you have to um, recreate everything um, in the original order. Uh, in the original order, because if suppose task case has some dependency, right? And the container is running something, some dependency, some module, then uh, then it will be difficult for. Uh, um, I think ordering can be done uh, um, can be done anyways, uh, Arvind. Uh, but it is independent. You can start from task B, and that thing is you have to done in the pipe done in the, in the pipeline run. You have to change this two two ways, pipeline and pipeline run, uh, okay. to to accommodate this. But again, once this is ready, I think uh, we again need to uh, do uh, whole step once again. Uh, right. Once this is ready. So uh, one this more is, question is kind yeah. of uh, overlapping with Kubernetes. We know in Kubernetes, if a pod crashes, mm -hmm. then the manager will automatically create another pod. Yes. Yeah. So in this case, for uh, because unlike Argo CD, you said uh, here Tecton is running inside the cluster. Yes. And task A is a pod. So suppose some uh, some uh, error happened in step two, so task A crashes. Then uh, Kubernetes will uh, again create task A automatically. Mm. Because it's think... running inside the Kubernetes pod, right? Cluster. Yeah. Mm. 
I'm not pretty much confident. Probably more hands-on is required. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, basically, could, what I'm trying yeah. to get at is uh, yes, yes, I got what is the mm. real value add of Tecton? Because mm. Argo CD is already there, and you mm. mentioned a couple of times. Uh, unlike Argo CD, this one is running inside the cluster. Mm. Okay. So these are some of the advantages which we must be getting. There okay. must be some why it's better to go to Tecton. Yeah. I think uh, I think I, I missed to cover that slide, but uh, that it particularly highlights the differences. But I think the reusability is what I see. Uh, reusability, um, customizable. You can customize as you said. Like we can create multiple steps, and we can customize that. Uh, reusable the templates, and um, basically um, it is it is acting as an extension to Kubernetes cluster. Unlike yeah. uh, in Argo CD, it is not coming as extension. Argo CD is not extension to Kubernetes. Once, uh, see, one in a in a technology, if like extension is there for a particular technology, it runs very fast, and uh, you know more reusable templates you can define over Argo CD. Uh, I think that slide I have missed, but I think there are a couple of points which um, I I see customization and um, reusability, and basically standardization over uh, the other clusters uh, okay, which okay. i think i will actually include while sharing um, that's a good point to i was just thinking you used uh, argo cd as well previously um i have been using uh, not in the production systems but i have used this um, uh, again i have learned through the uh, the the self hands on but i have in that production environment i have not used this cloud native technologies we still rely on uh, um, uh, Azure DevOps to deploy anything on the cluster. Uh, Azure oh, okay. DevOps to uh, we are still using that one on when it comes to the uh, the production systems, um, the typical uh, CI/CD pipeline for the Kubernetes. There are tasks available in the Kubernetes Azure DevOps, right? So we are using that one, and 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 Docker images. The only thing is that is uh, it is like a vendor lock-in. No, those scripts you cannot use on AWS. Correct. Yeah, it is vendor locking, but this is not vendor locking. <laughs> this is the difference. But the, uh, I think um, licensing issues and all these things comes, and enterprise don't accept these. This is the challenge which which I see. Um, uh, you know, uh. this, this is where I cannot. Um, it's difficult to propose the solutions uh, uh, out of the box. Um, we can go for security solutions out of the box, but uh, for development, CI/CD. It's it's difficult to uh, propose, but I, yeah. So that's where the challenge comes. That's why we are still on ADO for uh, developments. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, any other questions from others? We have a number of people on the call. Go ahead. Go ahead. See. I think we have. Okay, uh, Sajina Teres, Teres, she, she or she has asked, uh, what okay. is process payload? And one more question, what is meant by container image? Okay, process payload is uh, nothing but uh, basically giving a uh, payload this type is like, uh, if you have used the postman, payload is the kind of, uh, uh, what you say, uh, when you want to pass a data, a payload is usually in the JSON format. Uh, it's a when you want to ingest the data, basically pass uh, number of requests to a particular uh, particular uh, instance or any server. So you do that in a JSON format. So if you have used uh, uh, Postman, so we usually uh, learn uh, uh, the first concept came when the Postman came. Postman is a tool to generate the payloads. It's a re JSON request. Basically, you pass uh, user input in bulk. You can do that one using a JSON file, and you can define the data in the JSON file and and pass the payload. Pay as you see the name itself, payload means lot of data ingesting to just to do the testing of the event. Um, because you want to produce before it goes to the production, right? You need to do a live testing, uh, some regression testing. So. In a bulk, you insert the data. Try to insert the data. That is called payload. Payload. 
means in a single json file uh, you trying to ingest the data as you see in my event example you we were doing that uh, payload uh, this thing uh, ingestion which we were trying to do so this is where uh, we were ingesting the data here so this is called process payload means uh, ingesting the data uh, uh, sequentially using a json file uh, to give the you know event handler some input so in a in a this is what is called process payload like uh, payload it is usually a json format and tested you can even through multiple tools like postman are available to do a, a process payload these days uh, the other question was uh, related to uh, uh, what was that what is meant by container image container image so uh, in kubernetes right in kubernetes there are uh, um, there is there are terminologies which are used this is the again a terminology which is used in the kubernetes uh, there is a kubernetes cluster pods uh container and container images container is just a orchestration uh, uh like images which are running uh like we have in azure we have azure container instance uh which is doing the same job as uh, docker desktop so container image is image is like something operating system you can see see docker desktop this is the kind of docker desktop so this is operating system you consider this as operating system it's a image which has been deployed Uh, like uh, it's basically, I think uh, uh, we have used Ubuntu image, or uh, this is where uh, we have defined uh, uh, the uh, basically a uh, Ubuntu. See, Ubuntu image has been defined. Consider this as an OS image in operating system in a VM. We have operating system, right? So consider this Docker uh, container this image as a uh, same like an operating system, which is equipped with a CPU, RAM. Uh, which you need to define at the time of creating the image. Okay, um, uh, there is a separate template uh, to define container, create a container image. So um, it's kind of operating system which you are running inside the, uh, uh, you know, different. Uh, uh, we are running inside the pod. So there are different images. We can have multiple container images in a in a single pod, and that uh, those container images interact with each other um, using. Um, Uh, dependencies we we defined in the in the YAML. So container image is basically operating system as a layman language, which is used to run uh, the uh, run the application. It can host multiple application in a particular container image, but dependencies needs to be defined. So that is where uh, it is taking uh, advantage over a over a via uh, virtual machine. So this is used in microservice architecture. So Yeah, that's what uh, the simple uh, line is, is the concern is an os operating system multiple os running inside a pod so that is what container images uh, okay thanks for that uh, any other questions maybe one or two more if anyone has something to ask okay no further questions uh, so thank you so much tarun uh, on behalf of the audience okay pranav go ahead pranav pranav you have to unmute your ha uh, yeah, go ahead so what is uh, that so i didn't understand that container part container part uh container means it's uh, container images you you mean or container container is uh, basically uh, what do you say um it's basically container is some, some kind of storage right uh, in a layman language let's come from the layman language container is something which is used to contain something to to uh, uh, store something uh, container so that is called a container and um in container we have a concern in that container we have multiple operating systems operating with op like 10 operating system so those operating system is called uh, there are 10 operating system in a container uh, container right so there are 10 images so we call uh, this is a container image there is a container which is used to contain the um, is uh, responsible for uh, hosting multiple objects 
uh, in layman language or multiple operating system in technical language uh, the container is capable of holding multiple operating system inside a single container so multiple operating system can host multiple application and those operating system suppose 10 operating systems are there means 10 container images inside a container so those container images can interact also with each other using um, using uh, networking mechanism container is nothing but a, uh, you know can say a bucket and then uh, there are multiple uh, things which are which are suppose objects which are kept inside the container right so that uh, those objects are called multiple objects are called container images so images is a operating system each image is a operating system so that is where uh, these terminologies comes and to run this container so see every see we, i suppose i have 10 containers like this how will these 10 containers run the you need a orchestration platform right to run different type of uh, something uh, either you can use uh, uh, azure con uh, uh, container instance or a kubernetes cl kubernetes cluster so that is where orchestration run running engine is needed so that is where the uh, kubernetes kubernetes came uh, this is the difference in the language language so uh, but yes if i think you still name not able to access then uh, we can uh, Check that one. The terminal. I have so. posted a link on the chat on the okay. Q and A with a link okay. to uh, Devopedia's article on containerization. So if okay, you are wonderful. very new to this concept, yes. you can read that article. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Pranav, you are there. I have posted a link. Yes, sir. On Devopedia containerization. Yeah, those are covered in the terminology oh, of Kubernetes. That yeah. will give you a good idea of what it is. And uh, Satyaban has asked a question. Uh, what is the scope of automation using ML for SecOps? That means security ops. Tarun, are you there? Of ML. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just thinking so. ML um, something which I have not worked hands on, but uh, see security ops I can tell from the uh, simple uh, DevOps perspective, development uh, pers DevOps perspective. So SecOps is something which has been introduced uh, since last uh, I think um, 2020. This has been introduced a lot. So SecOps is nothing but ingesting the security inside the uh, pipelines. However, uh, in uh, practical implementation and ML ops. So the ML ops again, ML when you say ML ops, it is been derived from development DevOps only. So um, uh, see, there is no advantage disadvantage, but SecOps is something which we are trying to introduce uh, security inside the pipeline. So we have uh, currently DevOps pipeline running the uh, unit test, regression test, and um, um, number of tests on a cube, and all those things for the, uh, um, the code coverage and all. Uh, and then, then there are custom unit tests available, but uh, uh, they are not out of the box security which has been invested inside the pipelines. To introduce that the security concept to uh, scan the vulnerabilities which you are having right in your in your application to to remediate those vulnerabilities, we introduce uh, like uh, uh, this uh, concept called sec security ops in the in the DevOps pipeline. In MLOps, also similar things. Uh, there are no disadvantages, only advantages, uh, which is uh, to our introduction of security. So uh, there, are, there are lot number of tools which are available now to uh, focus on uh, while security is being ingested in the in the uh, operations, uh, the Dev DevOps. So in process of introducing security into the pipelines is called DevSecOps. Uh, DevOps was already there, but introducing security, it is comes to DevSecOps. MLOps, I have to explore more um, how to uh, because uh, I've never worked, but uh, this is where uh, uh, this is where it has been um, different tools. I think Treva is one tool which I did a demo also, uh, which can be used in the pipelines. I think uh, Treva scan, uh, Treva scan. Uh, like uh, scan tool, uh, yeah, TV scan, TV, TV for uh, vulnerability imaging scanning. So this is one of the tool which I have used uh, 
like uh, within um, within abb as well so trivi scan is you can use so process of introducing these kind of tools in your uh, your pipelines this is where you call uh, um, like uh, devsecops where you scan for vulnerabilities also in devops pipelines there are no process of uh, scanning vulnerabilities out of the box but to introducing tools like trivi can introduce a concept called security operations inside the devops so this is where i can um, help but mlops again i have to check uh, different that, uh, yeah, yeah i think we can conclude here uh, just to summarize as a passing uh, comment uh, mm -hmm. so tarun started with a introduction to cloud native technology what it means then he gave us a very interesting demo uh, going through all the concepts of uh, tecton that is task, task run, uh, pipeline, pipeline run, triggers, and so forth. In between, he uh, looked at the ecosystem as well, starting from how to use, uh, how to install Minikube. And for that, you need a Docker uh, desktop to be running or any sort of Docker daemon to be running. He also told us how to uh, put the different extensions and how to set up the environment through Chocolatey for Windows. Similar uh, installation tools uh, in Mac and uh, Linux you can use. So I believe these uh, kind of uh, installation uh, steps will also be useful, will definitely be useful for beginners. If you are completely new to this environment of uh, Docker and Kubernetes and Minikube, yeah, you can follow those steps before you get into 